And now we are joined by Peter Williams QC to examine the police's role in the GCSB's unlawful surveillance committed during Operation Debut. Uh, Mr Peter Williams, welcome to the programme. Sean, it's a privilege and a pleasure. <laughs> Good to have you here. Um, what do you make of this uh, GCSB um, unlawful surveillance of Kim.com at the behest of the New Zealand Police? I think it's absolutely disgraceful, absolutely disgraceful. There are about, I understand, 400 employees uh, in the Spy Bureau. They must have well known uh, that it's not within their jurisdiction to spy upon New Zealanders, New Zealand residents. They knew it was illegal. They have admitted it was illegal. And for an organisation that's costing the taxpayer uh, over $40 million a year, $40 million a year, I mean, we could feed all the children that are living in poverty with that money, uh, for them to make such a gross error, if it was a gross error, and I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, uh, is absolutely disgraceful. And of course there are two parties involved here, there's the GCSB and there's the New Zealand Police. Now, yes. if, if one was that lacklustre that it did not know the law relating to its own surveillance uh, framework, surely the police would have. What's, is, your, what's your view there? You're absolutely right. It is, it is, it is impossible for the, for the most unsophisticated person to believe uh, that they weren't aware that they were acting illegally. That, that's my opinion. So from a, a very lay person's point, uh, yeah. position relating to the law, from my point yeah. of view, it, it does seem that a, a reasonably minded New Zealander would look at this whole affair and think it's either incompetence yeah. or corruption in the sense that those two agencies pretended not to know. Exactly. What, what, what a, can you recall a precedence of, of such an event relating to the security agencies and the New Zealand police in the past? Well, of course, you've had the uh, the Chowdhury case, you know, uh, of the illegal searches. That was the out. SIS, was Yeah, it? well, SIS is, is another government agency uh, with a similar type of brief. Uh, you had the Such case, of course, years yes. ago, which was, again, quite ridiculous. Still controversial uh, today. You had the Zowie, um, yes. again, where they were involved there. Uh, uh, they, they, they don't have a very good record, put it that way. Mm. It's a very strange thing about spies. Uh, generally speaking, they're not very reliable. And the information that you would get presented from spy agencies to, say, a high court for mm. high court hearing, is that a reliable kind of uh, brief to be presented, for example? No, and I think they've got to be up front uh, where the police have obtained the cooperation of the SIS uh, or the Spy Bureau. They should say so. Uh, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, but on the other hand, the police themselves have millions of dollars of equipment to spy on and, and surveil, uh, survey people. I mean, why did they need this organisation? Yes, because <laughs> the police has got this special tactics group. Oh, it's absolutely. got the, the special investigations it's got a dozen group. Groups. Yeah. It's got this group that we know now is uh, involved here with yeah. organised crime and financial yeah. crimes. Yeah. Um, let's look at and get down to the tin tacks right. on yeah. this. Um, there's, there's a timeline that is really starting to stand out in this whole there affair. Is. Yeah. And that's August 10 through to mid September. First yeah. off, we see Detective Inspector Grant Wormall right. tells the High Court. Refer, refers to the High Court to this mystery group, this, this, right. this organisation, right. government entity. There was insufficient specificity. With insufficient specificity. Absolutely. That, that, that shadowy organisation met with a planning meeting yep. in December 14. Yep. And at that meeting there were others, obviously Crown Law, there was even yeah. United States representatives, we understand. They should have all been identified. Each person at the meeting should have been identified to the defence. One in particular was obviously the GCSB. Absolutely. Let's get that, that, but but not that identified was, to the court. It was not. Yeah. August 17, so one week later, yeah. after Grant Wormald, and Detective Inspector, was asked to name that group and yeah. he said he'd prefer not to. He should have been ordered to by the judge. The judge should have said... Uh, I'm ordering you to answer the question. Or Davison should have got up and asked the judge to order the witness to answer. Uh, and if the witness did not answer, uh, he could have been uh, cited for contempt of court. That's what should have happened. Would it have been satisfactory for him to say he, he would prefer not to? Which no, is what he... no, witnesses are there to give evidence. They're not there to choose what they want to give and what they don't want to give. I can't understand why the learned judge 
didn't say to the witness, you are here to give evidence. And there's a question put to you, you answer it, truthfully. Of and course, why wasn't that done? Of course, short few minutes later, Grant Wormall, the inspector, mm. the detective inspector, was asked by Kim.com's counsel, right. were any other, was any other surveillance mm. operated? Uh, Unfortunately, when you look at the question as recorded, yes. it's very obtuse. Yes. It, it's not clear. Well, what he does say here is, David Davison says, yeah. so apart from the surveillance which the police surveillance team might have been going to undertake on your behalf, was there any other surveillance been undertaken here in New Zealand to your knowledge? Mm. Grant Wormald replied, no, there wasn't. But you see, he should have followed that up by being more specific. He should have said to the witness, uh, was the SIS involved? Yes or no? Was the spy bureau involved? Yes or no? And then followed up again with a barrage of questions, uh, obtaining all the detail uh, relating to that. Because he, the defence had nothing to lose. There's no skin off uh, dot, toms, uh, dot com's nose, big, big though it may be, uh, that there's no skin off it because there's nothing for the defence to lose. He should have bored in on this and asked at least another dozen questions and really tied this uh, police officer up. So there's no wiggle room? No wiggle room, but there is wiggle room at the present moment because the nature of the question when you look at it is too obtuse. So he, the, the police haven't been nailed to the wall they over this? They haven't been nailed to the wall, that is absolutely right. But is that different from perhaps the New Zealand public being reasonably, uh, is it reasonable for the New Zealand public yeah. to think the, the, they're trying to cover up something? Absolutely. Uh, what you're saying, I understand completely what you're saying. Firstly, in my respectful opinion, there's the, the evidence is not black and white enough to nail home a perjury charge. I make that quite clear. And I've looked at it from what you've given me uh, fairly carefully. It's, it's too obtuse. The question put by Davison is not clear enough. Mm. There are too many sort of um, uh, parts of it. it it's actually uh, a prefaced question. It's, it's not a clear, direct question. But so far as the second matter is concerned, which is public perception, which is what you're talking about now, the, the public are quite entitled to take the inference uh, from the whole setup uh, that there was a cover-up, an, an attempted cover-up uh, by the police. For mm. some reason, the police were ashamed or reticent. They didn't want the public to know that the spy bureau had been spying on .com. So before we look in detail at this apparent potential cover-up, right. Grant Wormald, in his defence outside of the right. court apparatus, said he was replying when he said no there wasn't yeah. um, to the fact that no physical bugging had been taken had taken place by any other entity other right. than the police does that do you believe stack up as a reasonably mild well, you know, it's again you see that, that the thing wasn't chiseled enough mm. it, there should have been dozens of questions put here the thing should have been chiseled uh, and he's got these loopholes now in, in my respectful opinion uh, the cross-examination should have been far more elaborate and far more detailed, far more specific. Uh, and the judge should have assisted. The judge should have ordered uh, that questions be answered. Mm. Uh, I, I find it a fairly unsatisfactory uh, forensic exercise uh, when one looks at what you've supplied me uh, with. Uh, well, let's look at this potential cover-up. So we know that that exchange took place in the High Court on August the 10th. Right. Seven days later, the acting Prime Minister, Bill English, yeah. he signs a ministerial certificate that suppresses details of the GCSB involvement yeah. so that the police and the GCSB no longer feel honour bound or need to reveal yeah. to the High Court that the GCSB was involved and that a surveillance was uh, committed by yes. the GCSB. Then we see this whole thing where the Prime Minister, a week or so later, well, sorry, a month mm. later, reveals that unlawful surveillance has taken place. So the cat's out of the bag. That's right. But between that August 10 and September 7th and September 13th, do you believe that the police or the authorities, by way of the GCSB trying to get a suppressing order, were trying to cover this whole mess up? Well, firstly, taking uh, those facts in isolation, firstly, looking at the certificate, 
Uh, I don't really know what was in that certificate. So I can't really uh, give a conclusive uh, opinion in respect of that. With, with the certificate, it's been established that it was a suppressing order. Yeah, but if, if it was an attempt uh, to cover up, uh, in, in other words, for the public not to know mm. uh, what went on, uh, then I think shame, 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 shame. That's all I can say, shame. Mr. Williams, what you've detailed here is there are so many unanswered questions Absolutely. around this whole thing. So what should take place from here on so that the public interest and the national interest is observed? I just want to say one thing. So far as the spy bureau uh, is concerned, uh, it is responsible to the Prime Minister. And the reason for that is that otherwise it's not transparent. The, the reporters, the, the news media don't have access to what goes on. And that's understandable. It's a spy bureau. So we entrust the Prime Minister as being the most trusted person in New Zealand, whoever the Prime Minister is, to be the person responsible. Now the, the Director of the Spy Bureau, Mr Young, uh, and his cohorts uh, report uh, frequently to the uh, Prime Minister, which is how it should be, and they brief him all the time on what's going on. Uh, that should be taped. Those briefings should be taped. Uh, the only reason that the Prime Minister now uh, has cause to uh, be concerned is that one of the uh, personnel there took notes and in those notes uh, was the briefing relating to dot com. Suddenly the suddenly, memory. Suddenly the memory that the, the mm. Prime Minister's caught out because it, he, he previously had said you know he wasn't briefed on it mm. but now there's the written document. But what we should have is a tape. All, because it's such a very important matter uh, what, if, what if there was some sort of a secret agreement going on with Russia or a secret agreement going on with some Pacific island or we were supporting say a dictator in Fiji all these things without the public knowledge uh, what a shocking thing that would be and because this is such an and we're spending 40 million a year on it why shouldn't all those briefings between the Prime Minister and Mr Young and his cohorts all be taped I mean the court proceedings are all taped uh, all important functions uh, are, are taped, so we've got records. Um, and accountability. And accountability. So that comes down to, there are calls for independent inquiry Absolutely. into this whole affair, yep. right from yep. go to yep. end. What type of inquiry do you feel would satisfy the public interest and justice in this whole It's got to be a constructive inquiry, not just an inquiry, a little whitewash thing. It's got to be a constructive inquiry with recommendations for reform because the spy bureaus in this country have a dreadful history. Again and again, they're caught out and illegal. We've cited some cases, but there are others as well. They've got a shocking. There are many who say we should abolish them completely. We shouldn't spend this money on them. I mean, basically, we're supplying information to America. That's really what mm. these Waihopi base and so forth. I've acted for some of the people at Waihopi. Uh, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a huge organization intercepting all sorts of things, but the information generally speaking, goes to America. That's really, we're, we're acting as agents for America on New Zealand soil. That's really what it comes to. In brief, who would be the kind of person that you think that well, would be satisfied to lead? No one's going to take any notice of what I say at any rate, but I would like to see a person of the status of Mr. Gould. Mr. Gould was a, uh, a, a member of parliament uh, in England. Uh, I understand now in New Zealand, he's a chancellor of one of our universities. Uh, he writes articles from time to time uh, for the newspaper and I read them and I think they're so well put together. I'm one of his uh, disciples, I suppose. I've never met him actually, but uh, he's obviously a person of high intellectual status. He's a person of international experience. Uh, he's been a member of parliament in England. Uh, he's obviously very uh, intelligent and I think he would be an ideal person uh, to head such an inquiry. Mr Peter Williams, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was Peter Williams QC. And that's all for this week. We're back at the same time next week with more guests on the Bits and Interview. Until then, take care and we'll see you soon. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.